Here we are then. Uh, welcome along to the first ever live TNC podcast here on Talk Norris City. Thank you so much, first of all, for joining in. If you're listening back on audio, welcome along. Um, this went live on YouTube, first of all. If you haven't already subscribed to the Talk Norris City YouTube channel, why not do that now? You get notified every time we go live. We're aiming to do exactly that after every single game this season. Chris, how are we? Um... Just flat, just flat. Um, I, I just really, be- I did honestly believe that today we would see some sort of something from someone, and we didn't. Um, and I think it's very evident today that before the the players cross the white line, that the uh, you know I, they certainly weren't um, wanting to do it for Daniel Farker. Um, and I think it highlights the importance of having the supporters in the stadium, Jack, because a game like that today that's as important as it was, I feel like the uh, the Norwich fans would have massively got behind the boys. And I, I just felt the team was, again, completely wrong. And I know I've not got any coaching badges, but as a fan, I'm, in, I'm entitled to my opinion. And I just, I just really believe that how, how have they started Duda over Cantwell? Um, but what I will say is it's fantastic that Anel started today, about blooming time, by the way. Um, maybe Daniel Fark has been listening to the, the TNC live streams. I hope he hasn't. But, um, yeah, that's a positive. But today, I mean, I think what showed is is we just lack that experience massively. Um, Tim Close today didn't have, didn't have a good game and showed, um, you know, uh, he's not been in the team, obviously, because he's been injured and problems all over the park again. Um, but we just looked flat all game, Jack. Um, Brighton was zapping a ball, the ball about really nicely. and We were absolutely nowhere near the mark. And I can see the live comments already and people are still seething with anger. And um, and I was, but actually I've, I'm beyond that now. I'm numb to it. I'm literally numb to the disappointing performances that we've been served up as, as loyal fans over and over again. And what's frustrating for me, Jack, is, you know, Players come and go, yeah. Josip Dermic, Duda, you know, these players come and go. But our club will always remain. And at the moment, I genuinely feel like the medium-term future of our football club is in jeopardy. Uh, I think the culture is taking a serious strain. And I think that, you know, if Daniel Farker does not get a win before the end of this season, I I just can't, not even a win. If we continue in the vein that we are in from now until the end of the season... How can the football club expect the fans to to be behind Daniel Farker? And, you know, there's people questioning him tonight. And to be fair, I, I think it's completely justified. I really do. Yeah, let's bring up the first comment of the day. Then this is from L Tricks on YouTube. And, and they say, Daniel Farker lost my support today. How can he play Duda and Dermich? I simply do not understand. To make substitutes after 60 minutes of flat, directionless football, I'm just mm-hmm. angry at him. Chris, I can hear in your voice, mate, that, you know, you were, you were angry on, um, what was it, Wednesday night we played Arsenal? Um, so and, and, and today, it, there is that numb feel. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's because, you know, we, we've left it a few hours. Um, you know, we've both been busy today, so we couldn't go live straight after the game. But um, I don't know if it's that or if it's just the, the, the stage in which, which we're at. It was really interesting you raised the point there about fans being in the stadium. And I do buy that argument to a certain extent, but mm. I, I could kind of understand it if the if the performances were very different pre-COVID, but they weren't. Like yeah. we, we haven't um we haven't picked up a point from a losing position all season. Yeah. Um I mean that stats are the, the big worry here that the massive reason we were so su- successful last season in the championship was because we could come f- behind from losing positions. We could, um, you know, we could go two goals down and still expect to maybe get something out of that game. I mean, look at Millwall last season and Nottingham Forest. They're the two that popped to my head. Uh, yeah, the, the quality of the opposition is far less, but that was our philosophy. And, and I feel I keep hearing people saying, oh, we're, at least we've stuck to our principles. I don't know what our principles are anymore because... I thought they were free-flowing, goal-scoring football. We could afford to, you know, ship a few goals because we'd go on and, and score more. But it's not that anymore. We've scored once in the previous eight Premier League games. I think I'm sure I'm sure someone will clarify that in the comments. But I know it's 
very, very low. And we're still shipping goals and we're not even looking like scoring. Like I can't recall um, a chance today in which I thought, oh, this is a this is a great opportunity. We weren't carving anything open. And, and when we were breaking with a bit of pace, we'd then just cut it back and, and Brighton would be able to, to shape up. I think it was probably one of the easiest performances Brighton could have put in today. It was easy for them. We, we didn't make it difficult, did we? Well, and you say easy for them, Jack. I, I genuinely believe they weren't out of third gear, just like Arsenal. I, re- I didn't, I, and, and, I, and I know that I have this, I know I have this irrational hatred for Brighton, um, which I'll try not to go down. But for me today, Brighton not getting out of third gear and still being able to comfortably, and I say comfortably beat us. Um, I know the scoreline was only 1-0, but it, it just felt like, as you say, Jack, we were never, ever going to score. Uh, it was just... It just felt so weak. I felt like we were weak. I felt like there was no fight. Um, You know, the only sort of fight I saw was um, Cantwell throwing in a a challenge at the end of the game and people will give me stick for that saying, well, that doesn't matter, Chris, this, this and that. Well, yeah, you know what? It does show that you give a shit because I've seen that I've seen some players in the last three games that just look like they do not care. And I'm not buying this workload thing that Fark is giving. You know, oh, I changed the team today because of the workload. I'm sorry, mate, but that's a joke. Um, you know, these are professional footballers earning anywhere between 30 and potentially even 60 grand a week, yeah? And and how on earth? Do you, I, I just think you start your best team, Jack. And, um, you know, they're professional footballers. They, they, can, they can play. And, and it's crap, Jack, because we won the league last season – playing games over and over again. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah? just the, the, It's just an excuse. And it's diversion tactics. And I almost feel like I'm listening to a politician. And one of the things that I really do want to bring up, Jack, because I think it's important to say so, because he brought it up himself. And by the way, I'm not Fark out, just to be really clear. I really respect Daniel Farker. I do think he can turn it around if he is given the support in terms of recruitment. Genuinely believe that. But... I really wasn't particularly pleased with his comments in the press this week, Jack. What what were the comments, just for the people watching who who weren't aware? Because when you raised this in in our WhatsApp group earlier, I hadn't, you know, I've, I've been slightly out of the loop this week with Norwich News, and I hadn't heard these comments. But it it took me aback when you when you when you sent me them. Well, basically, you just came out in the in the the pre match press conference and said that he had. He had offers from other clubs and he could have taken the, the easy option and, you know, earned more money and had more resource. And he stayed because he loves the club. And it almost felt like he was saying, you're lucky that I'm even here. And it was almost like, you know, we, we got the the pre-match thing versus Arsenal, which was a bit sharp. And we went, oh, not sure about that. And again, you know, I just I, I just felt it a bit inappropriate. I just didn't really... The, the, the timing of that was really poor. Like it, it felt arrogant. And I know that it came from a place of love, I think, because he really cares about the club. But I just felt like someone needed to get, get around him and say, Daniel, you, you, you can't be saying that sort of stuff. You know, you know, keep that under your bonnet. Yeah. But Norwich fans don't give a shit if you've been offered a contract at another club now because you're here. Yeah. You're, you're the guardian of our football club. And we expect the team to rally around you, to follow your instructions, to look up to you as a leader, to nurture those youngsters. And I believe those things have happened in the championship campaign. But going up to the Premier League, mate, it's not. And I just felt like the comments in the press this week prior to the game today were just just completely not needed, Jack. And it just... it, it is t- it's, a, it's totally crunching against the culture that Stuart Weber and you know Ben Kensel and, and and the rest of the North City team have have worked so hard to create. Um, it doesn't seem right. There, there there's a lack of connection right now between the management and the players. It's so obvious. Yeah, I'm not going to have anyone say that. Oh yeah, everyone everyone's fighting for each other and we'll do it to the end. And nah, they're done. Yeah, they're done. They know they're done joke i thought um i thought michael bailey summed up really nicely today in one of his tweets during the game and he said that he 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 looked at the team and he thought that every single player was on a different wavelength like when we went forwards passes were going astray we just looked completely all over the shop we've talked a lot about daniel farker in the first 10 minutes of this podcast i think it's worth bringing up the recruitment as well because 
you know, as, as much as Daniel Fark is to blame for a lot of the stuff that's gone wrong this season, so is so is Stuart Weber and the recruitment side of things. Mm. Let's look at the players that we brought in in the summer and um, and January in the hope of in the hope of survival. So Lucas Roop, Sam McCallum, who isn't here yet, I'm sure he'll become a good player. Ralph Farman, who's since been returned um, to his parent club and was apparently on uh, upwards of thirty thousand pounds a week. Duda. Josip Dermich, Sam Byram, who has been good for the money we paid. That that has to be said. Um, no, 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 no. Pause. He's been injured. Yeah. Sam had a blinder against Man City and he's had some solid performances that have kept Max out of the team on a couple of occasions. And I think Sam will be a quality player for us in the championship, by all means. And he could have been a good player for us in the Premier League, but he's been injured. So I don't actually think that's I don't think that's fair to say he's been good. Yeah, he's been good in spells, but he's played what? Four, five games, six games, maybe. Am I wrong? I think he's played a few more, but I, no, I can I completely understand. I suppose he looks good in comparison to the rest of the signings, which isn't that hard. Uh, and the other one was Ibrahim Amadou, who's been returned from his loan early. So, and look, I say there that the the, the record signing this going into the season was seven hundred and fifty thousand pounds. We have to remember here, all of these players come with hefty agent fees and hefty wages. So. The, the actual cost of these loans that have not worked out at all on oh, Patrick Roberts as well we must, we must um, remember him haven't been have, haven't come cheap so although in comparison to the to the rest of the division we've spent pennies we've actually spent a fair bit on, on wages etc cetera, etc cetera. so it's been really disappointing and I saw um, I think it was our good friend Richard Hancock on, on Twitter earlier saying that he wonders whether um, you know it's slightly generous to be calling Stuart Weber a genius because he said for every Emmy Buendia, there's a, you know, there's um there's a Patrick Roberts thrown in there. And I think that's slightly unfair. I still very much rate Stuart Weber, what he's done at the club. I think he's a fantastic chap. We've been lucky enough to meet him on, on a few occasions and he's come on the podcast. I love his honesty. I think the, the work he's done at Norwich City is, is phenomenal. Um, yeah, we but, need to but we have to hold people to account. And, and this season, it hasn't been good enough. That I, I hate it when, you know, people keep calling us the ultimate yo-yo club. Yeah, it's exciting as a fan. But when you consistently get to the Premier League and consistently fall short, you have to change something. Like, something has to change. And I feel like this time around, it was a really good opportunity for us to remain in the Premier League and then kick on because... Um, we when we go down this season, it will be our fifth relegation from the Premier League. No club ever has been relegated from the Premier League as many times as us. So it just shows that lack of ability to compete in the top flight, I think. Mm. OK, so I, I think a bit of perspective is important here, Jack. You know, you look at the likes of Wigan, you know, this week, absolutely horrendous situation. Uh, you know, Barry Bolton, you know, you could go down the avenue. I think perspective is is needing to be applied in this particular time in, on planet Earth where it's just crazy for everyone right now. So to be in the Premier League is a blessing. We are ahead of schedule. Now, I know this is frustrating for people to hear, but I would much rather be a yo-yo club than be Ipswich Town. Yeah. Mid-table, <laughs> mediocrity in the championship. Probably bigger than Ipswich. Yeah. And, and and now and now they're in League One and they're never going to get out again. It's going to be really difficult for them. So I'd rather be a yo-yo club. That's great perspective. One of the things that I do want to address, Jack, and I don't want to, I don't want to make this personal, but I, I want to do say something. You and I have received criticism today on Twitter. You might not have seen it, but I've seen it, saying, "Well, we're, because you know, we'll only be nice to people if they're our mates because they've been on our podcast, or you know, we're pally with them and stuff." That's not how this works. This is a fan channel. We'll hold people to account, and if me and Jack have to have some honest conversations which we've had before, where people have messaged us and said, boys, I think that's completely unfair. And we have to have a conversation with that person. But one thing you can never accuse us of is being pals with someone and, and not being critical of them. And when it comes to Stuart, he is a very honest guy. We all know that. And he will be hurting right now. I mean, you saw the pictures on BT today. You know, he, he looks... He looks really hurt. He looks like he's struggling. And 
you know, and I'm not saying, oh, poor old Stuart. I'm not because he deserves to be held to account. You know, the recruitment's been poor. I think everyone knows that. I do think when you say poor, it's been unlucky as well because you would have expected a couple of those players to to really shine. I mean, Patrick Roberts was a bit of a diamond in the rough. I felt like that could have worked. It, I really do. But obviously, Todd Cantwell then just came came up crops. Um, again, I believe that Ralph Farman was signed to actually knock Tim Tim Krul off the number one spot. I believe that. That's my own personal opinion. But he obviously didn't do that because Tim Krul's been exceptional. Ibrahim Amadou, I mean, uh, that had all of the pedigree. It, it, it looked so good on paper, but it just didn't work. Um, but Stuart deserves to be criticised for the recruitment, but he knows that. And see, this is the difference, Jack. Daniel Farker, at the moment, is wishy-washing around taking accountability. He's getting there. He's kind of hinting at it. And in the press conference today, he's given up, <laughs> which, yeah. which which is, I guess, honesty in a sense. But there's a difference between, you know, sh- sh- you know, hinting at the fact you're giving up than taking responsibility and accountability. I mean, I sound like a broken record, Jack. So the difference between Stu- by when people criticise Stuart, I, I, I understand why you're doing it. But at the same time, I've got a lot of respect for Stuart because he knows that he's done wrong and he admits that he's done wrong and he's gone out publicly and said the recruitment wasn't good enough. So I think, but it's a great point. And, and what, and I'll finish that piece on saying that Stuart shouldn't be void of criticism. Um, but he'll know that, but the difference is we know full well that Stuart will be here next season and he will literally bleed for our football club to get us back into the premier league. So, you know, and that, and that's a massive difference for me. Yeah, definitely. I, I think the, the, the one thing that Stuart won't want is yes men around him. And and whether you're an, a fan or whether you're a journalist watching or whatever you are, you know, we're all Norwich City fans at heart. We just hold slightly different pieces of the puzzle. Um, mm. You have to say what you think, right? You have to be, um, you have to hold people to account. And it really frustrates me when people are just deludedly optimistic. Like you can see through it and, and the club can see through it. We've heard from certain people personally from the club in recent weeks who have said, look, we know it's going wrong. We're trying our hardest to turn it around. We're finding it really tough. Also, to give you know a bit of um, credit to, to Daniel and Stuart as well, when you're operating on such a limited budget, which we are in Premier League scheme, in the Premier League scheme of things, you are only probably going to get one in five signings that works because you're throwing your dart at a very cheap dartboard. You're right. You're, you, you've got a, a set of transfers that. One, we'll want to come to Norwich City. And two, we'll have the money to attract them here. So the recruitment has been poor, but it was almost like, well, we kind of expected a few of them not to work out because of the budget we're on. And also, if you look at the top, Everton the other day, they've had 20 million, 30 million, 40 million pound signings that haven't worked out. But because they've got the money to consistently churn them out, you almost forget about them because we are in a situation where we only have a a, a finite budget. Every Duda and every Dermich really hurts because they're the kind of players that we are splashing the money out on the wages. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree, Jack. And, and you know, I, I don't think, you know, Dina De- and Michael and, and the board are avoided criticism as well. They, they should do because there was a hybrid to be struck this season. There's no way in hell we should have only spent 700 grand. No way in hell, um, regardless of bonuses, regardless of wages, you've got to make a calculated gamble to try and stay in the Premier League. I, I really do. And I, I don't think we were anywhere near that middle ground at all. I think really what we've done is we've gambled. We've spent absolutely bugger all to perform this miracle. But it was said from the beginning of the season. So I guess our expectations as of fans has been set. But the reason why I can see the, li- the live comments now going crazy on Facebook and YouTube. So thank you so much. The reason why all of these people, Jack, are, are so angry is because we're going down without a fight. And Stuart Webber come on our pro- came on our podcast and he said to us, one thing is for sure, we will do everything we can to stay in this league. And at the moment, on the pitch, I don't see we're doing everything we can. For me, that that team that was put out today was just completely wrong. I mean, everyone knew that that team wasn't set up to score goals. You know, sixty. I think it, I, I don't. I can't remember the exact stats. So forgive me and correct me in the comments. I think Jake said on BT it was sixty-three percent of our goals had come from Todd and Timu. Yeah. Now for me, 
I don't you, know. Chris, you look at the, our goals. You look at our goal scoring stats. It's Timmy Puki on eleven. It's Todd Campman on seven, and then the next player below him is like Dermich on one. No one else has scored goals. Mate, it's a joke. Y Josip Dermic, uh, I am. Let, let's talk about Josip Dermic and let's talk about Duda. And I really want to be, you know, I, I want to make it clear to the viewers watching. Thank you to everyone who's watching. If you are new to Talk Norwich City, welcome. Please do hit subscribe with the largest Norwich City fan channel on uh, on the internet. I don't want to get in this whole kind of, um, you know, thing of piling on players because one, I don't think it's fair. Two, they're human. Three, they're, they're just doing their job. Um, some of them not doing it well enough, but you can all, you can you can avoid a pile on, but also hold people to account, which I hope we're doing here. Yeah, Duda yeah. and Dermich, their performances in the last five games have been embarrassing, and I and I and I don't use that word lightly. I've watched them, and I felt ashamed that they're wearing Norwich City shirts. Dermich isn't running, and neither's Duda. And when they do get the ball, they give it away. It's simple, simple mistakes, and you just look at them and go. This is an insult to your manager, to the people paying your wages, to the fans paying their season ticket money. You are not trying. And I keep saying it's a really boring cliche to use, not trying, because the majority of the time footballers are putting in 100%. But mm -hmm. I can guarantee you that there is more to come from their football players. Duda is a player who has played in the Bundesliga at the very highest level. He should be fine at this level. And he looks an absolute mile off the pace. It's embarrassing, Chris. Yeah, I think you're right, Jack. And, you know, I think I think they are putting in a, a shift, so to speak. But they're I not. They're not. Yeah, you know, That's being generous. That's being generous. You know, they're, they're, they're bobbing about the pitch. They're doing their thing, whatever that is. But you can tell the difference. And I, and I, and I tweeted this early on. You can tell the difference between Adam Eda and Josip Dermic. And yeah. I don't care. And I don't care if Adam Eder's inexperienced. And I don't care if he's not got the goal-scoring pedigree. And I don't care who Adam Eder has played for or not play played for. I don't give a shit, Jack. Because Adam Eder today came on and he was buzzing about. He was full of energy. And and it's not just because he... Just, just let me, just let me in, in, interrupt here, Chris. It's not as if Adam Eder isn't proven. The man has scored a hat-trick for us this season. Cool. We know yeah. he can do it. And this is the thing, right, Jack? And I want to try and flip this, right? I'm going to flip this. This is a bit of a new direction now, okay? Hear me out. For me, so Duda and Josip have been poor. So, but they've been poor since the restart. So why the hell are they still starting football matches? Daniel Farker's a stat man. And I don't know what stats that... You know, I don't know if he really. I don't. I don't know whether he picks the team on on gut instinct or statistics or or tactical or or maybe the opposition or how they'll come up against defenders. But for me, I just can't. If we're looking at two, this is mad, by the way, but this is what Australia and this North City team have done. If you're looking at two top trump cards, yeah, everyone's played top trumps. For me, Adam Eder is a top trump. Is is is, is trumping Josip Dermich all day long. Todd Cantwell, he's top trumping Duda all day long. The 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 pace, the desire, the love for the club, the fact they're permanent signings. I mean, I could go on forever. And I, I just, it's just lost on me. And here's a bit of cynicism in me, Jack. And here's what I'm starting to worry about. Maybe, maybe we sign Duda on the premise that he's got to start a certain amount of games. Maybe. And I, and I don't want to try and stir the pot, but I'm starting to believe that, Jack, because surely no one would start Andre Duda over, over Todd Cantwell. I don't care if Todd Cantwell's tired, yeah? Todd Cantwell, with an ad abdom abdominal pull or whatever it was, yeah, he's, he's leaps and bounds ahead of Duda. I don't care if you've brought Duda in and he's your man and you said this and you said that. It's not worked. Face up to it. Be honest with each other. I mean, we ate, we completely alienated Moritz Leitner, so I don't see why they can't do it with him. And I really don't want to get personal. I agree with the way that you've put this in the room, Jack. I, I don't want to be nasty. I don't want to be out of order. And I don't want to be um, personal to them as, as human beings because I'm sure they're lovely guys as humans. But when they have put on a Norwich City shirt this season, it has not worked. Simple as that. And... Honestly, if Daniel Farker starts Duda or Josip in the next game, unless there's an injury, he has absolutely lost his mind. 
I um I know this is like a very simple and basic way to be looking at things, but it, I have had a lot of people message me over the last few days. I had um had an Arsenal fan message me today on a good friend of mine who who messaged me and said, "Who's this fool playing up front for you instead of Timu Puki?" And I sent him. Uh, I said I was Josip Dermich. Google his name and, and see what comes up. And he obviously found the music video. And it's like, how is this man being allowed to produce music videos when he's putting in performances like this? Just as if you're a Norwich fan looking in at this, you're thinking like he's getting away with, with doing his music and stuff. And he's putting in performances like this. We're paying a very, very handsome wage for this man. The, like, difference, is, the difference is, man, and, and I said this last week, and I'm sorry to go with Roy Keane again, but... If you're doing stuff on the pitch, right, produce music, you know, do some sponsorship deals, you know, wear some snapbacks, you know, you know, do some promo deals, some sponsorships and enjoy that side of life. Yeah, because you've got to enjoy your life. I'm sure they, they, they will and they absolutely have the right to do that. They really do. But don't do that when you haven't done anything for our football club. It was just so ill-timed. But you know what I don't understand, Jack? Track one was released, I think, prior to this season kicking off. Yeah, track two came out what a couple of months ago. Yeah, no, 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 no. We're fighting relegation. Can you not see that that is a PR disaster? I, I just don't get it. But anyway, away from that because that is maybe a, a bit personal. If if Josip enjoys producing music, music that's great. But for me, he's not enjoying playing for Norwich City Football Club. No, I completely agree. Um, I completely agree. Thank you to everyone for commenting as well. I, I mean, I, I'm looking at the viewing figures and, and there's loads of you tuning in to us, you know, watching us drink beer and, and, and moan about Norwich City. So thank you, first of all. Uh, we really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Um, me and Chris have been talking offline and saying like this is a really nice platform for us on, from a selfish point of view to feel part of the community because we're not getting that at Carrow at the moment. And hopefully it provide something from for you as well because i know these are really sort of challenging times for everyone um okay let's get let's look ahead a bit and let's answer charlie harrington's question he mm -hmm. he asked on youtube um what players are you worried will leave in the summer um and my very like instant react if you if that if that question from charlie i'll put it back on screen was asked to me five minutes after full time i would have said to be honest charlie mate I really don't care anymore because it's obvious that these guys aren't really playing for the shirt. Now I've had a bit of time to think about it. Of course I'll care what players leave. However, I do wonder whether some of the players in which we have, you know, really bigged up are necessarily good enough for these 25, 30 million pound moves that people were talking about. I think Max is excellent. I think Todd is excellent. Emmy is, I think, a class above even them. I think Emmy's superb, although goals haven't come. So you could you could argue that, you know, um, maybe he's not as good as, as um, he's made up to be. I think I'd be really disappointed to lose Todd um, because I think he gets Norwich. I think it's really important to have players like that in and around the squad. And his stats don't lie. He's been marvellous this season. Definitely, um, as Chris said in the last um, live, our most improved player. And that's not coming from a, a patronising point of view at all. He's been excellent. Emmy's going. I'm going to be disappointed to see him go because he really cheers me up watching him play. He's a, he's a Wes Houlihan, James, James Madison type player. The type of player you don't mind paying your five hundred pound season ticket for because he you you can guarantee something magical from him each game. It's going to be really disappointing to see Emmy leave, and he's definitely gone. That's an absolute certainty. Um, I think I, I, I think I'll be disappointed to see Ben Godfrey go, but I, I still don't think we've seen the best from Ben. And I'm starting to question whether he's a centre back or not. I think he's a midfielder. Yes, yeah, great point, Jack. It really is. Um, I, I, I think for me, I'd be very disappointed in seeing Tim Krull, Todd Cantwell or Max go. But I do think it's inevitable that Max and Todd will get offers from from some of the biggest clubs in, in, in England or, or even Europe, by the way. Um, I really do. Um, because th because they've been brilliant. Uh, I think Tim Krul as well. You know, I think the guy is more than good enough to to be, you know, starting in the Premier League week in, week out. You know, he's an absolutely incredible guy, leader, and uh, and very, very good. Uh, I know he made that mistake against Arsenal, but, um, you know, what, what a season. You know, I, I without him this season, I think we could have done a Derby County, mate. I really do. I think we would have been so embarrassing 
that it, this this would have turned into Arsenal fan TV. I really do believe that. So thank God for Tim Krull. And I really hope that the club do everything they can to make sure that they ward off interest for him, because I think it will come. Uh, and a lot of people haven't spoken about that. I think everyone thinks Tim Krull at, at Norwich is a given. Yeah, but I, I think I think his performances and his and his characteristics will absolutely warrant him a move away from the club if he wants to take that. I think the only thing I'd say about Tim, and I'd also um, fit Timu Puki into this bracket, I think at their stages in their careers, and I'm certainly not being insulting here, but they're on the they're on the wrong side of of 25. You could say they're 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 going through the latter stages of their career, um, and we know you know everyone knows they're both they're sorry. Tim Krul's not. Tim Krul's not that old. No, I know, but he's. You know, I think what what I'm what I'm meaning to say is they're both very settled at Norwich City, mm. and I think at this stage in their careers, they'll probably value that and know that they'll be getting game time over a move to I don't know Brighton, you know, and, and to sit on the bench. I, th- I think one of the things that I, I would like to bring up, which is a bit bit worrying for me, because I'm sure I'll take some stick from it, but it's just my honest opinion. Let me know in the comments if you agree or, or disagree. Emi Buendia, I think we need to discuss this. So everyone's saying how disappointing it'll be to see him leave and how, you know, he's an excellent player and he's worth paying my £500 ticket, you know, season ticket for. And, you know, he's absolutely more than capable of producing that magic. He is more than capable. But he just, it, 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 it just seems like we've, we've, got a, we've got a Ferrari parked at a really shit petrol station at the moment it really does it doesn't seem right it it doesn't feel like he is connecting with the team I think he needs the team around him and at the moment they're they're not there and his statistics have been fr- through the roof this season you know there's that 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 br- De Bruyne stat that, that, that everyone's been going on about but you did mention it Jack the goals haven't come in the Premier League um and for me it feels a bit I'm not saying he's anywhere. I think I think he's got more talent and and more latent potential than Redmond, but it feels a bit Nathan Redmond to me. If Buendia leaves, for me, it's like like for me, if we get the right money, it, it feels right to to let him move on. It, it, it does because at the moment, it's very clear to see that he's he's not gelling with Daniel Farker. I mean, for me, I mean, it's pretty obvious for me that. You know, just walking down the walking down the tunnel straight away after games and stuff. And again, amazing player, one of the best I've seen put on a Norwich shirt. But does he fit in this to, in into this team? I, I don't think he does. I don't think he fits into the style. I, potentially, I honestly think he might be too good for us. <laughs> I know that sounds mad, um, but but you, but we we've had we we brought up that comment that the Grant Holt made on the phone to me at the Arsenal game, saying that I can't believe that you two have slagged off. Um, my team saying that my team was worse than this team right and i actually ag- i agree with grant and i actually think that we need players that maybe just want it more yeah that fight more we need leaders we need exp- we need experience as well jack and we've massively lacked that today and, and people have slagged off hanley this season massively and i've criticized him too we desperately miss Grant Hanley at the back. We desperately miss Grant Hanley at the back. I cannot begin to tell you. And even when we talk about leaders, Jack, as well, um, you know, Tete, monumental, um, you know, servant for the football club, great guy, hilarious. I'm sure he's fantastic in the camp. But I feel like we need someone that's literally going to strangle someone, that's going to literally pick them up by the cuff of the neck and say, come on, do you want this? And I just think we're too nice. I think Daniel Farker's too nice. I can't see him kicking over the trolley at half time. And likewise, I don't see any leaders, like true quintessential football leaders in that changing room, you know, injecting that fight. Yeah, I guess the flip side, and it's not necessary. I'm just going to play devil advocate here because you know it's good fun to you know go go against the grain with you. It's basically the same squad as we had last season, right? And yeah. everyone was saying, "Oh, you know, we're not nice anymore. This is why we're winning games. We've got leaders." So what's changed from then? I, I no 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 no. I I didn't say that. Um, I didn't I didn't see any kind of core leaders last season I, I don't feel free to correct me if i'm wrong jack but for me we've always had a poor defense and we've not solved that problem in 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 so long now and it's been unfortunate you know tim close getting injured before a ball's kick this season is desperately unlucky 
Um, you know, and I've seen a comment in here now. We miss Bradley Johnson. That's the type of player that I mean. Like, that's the type of characteristic that I feel that we that, that we lack on the pitch and also off the pitch, Jack. Yeah, and and you know what? I I think we've probably made the same mistake that actually McNally made when he came to the Premier League with Norwich and we signed Leroy Fur and. They joined the club to get the exposure to move on to someone else. Yeah, it was a stepping stone, and I felt like the signings this this uh, you know tra- this summer have have indicated that. I, I don't see them bleeding for our football club. Yeah, I, I don't I don't see them leaving everything out on that pitch. I just, I just don't. I really don't. This is a really good comment actually, and, and they've put it in a way in which I wanted to say, but I couldn't think of the words. And this is from Stu. He says, at Brighton, it took us two seasons to earn the right to play expansive football. We simply didn't have the quality when we first got promoted. Season three, hopefully, we've just made it. You simply didn't have the quality to play that way. And you know what? I kind of agree. The quality and the and the, the reason we played such expansive, delightful football last season is because of our wing-backs mainly. Max and Jamal both pushed forward. It gave us overloaded um, attacking elements going forwards. We had Marco Stiefman pressing high, et cetera, et cetera. We tried that today in the opening 20 minutes and we created a few bits and bobs, nothing too um, too you know extraordinary. But Brighton were like, okay, we'll soak up a bit of pressure. We can defend this easy enough. And as soon as they hit the counter, our wing-backs were miles up the pitch. They got behind us. That's where the goal came from. That's where their chances came from. Mm-hmm. And I do agree if we would have taken a few of them chances, if we had more quality attacking players, if, you know, our defence was slightly better, we could deal with that kind of football that we wanted to play. And I'm not saying I'll park the bus, but you do have to adapt slightly. And we came up, kept the same squad and the same style, but but, and now we're acting surprised that it hasn't worked. But what hurts me again is it almost hurts me that we won against Manchester City in the manner that we did, Jack, because we played that system. We played well, that, that is a once-in-a-season result, isn't it? And also, let's not forget as well, Manchester City have lost a lot of games this season. <laughs> I know, but the point is, Jack, is today, the reason why we conceded that goal that we did to Brighton is not... I don't think it was because of the wing-backs. Feel free to shout at me. Well, you've got through the man. I mean, we had we had Tete that was covering for Tim Close, and he's a midfielder, and he's not got the legs. So, so for me, and then of course you mentioned Ben as well, and it's just it's just a massive clusterfuck at the moment in so many different areas. I mean, we could literally spend. I honestly think we could stream from now until midnight and still not cover all of the problems on the pitch. I really believe that, and I'm not. I don't think I'm being harsh. I really don't. And for me, Jack, one of the things we need to talk about now. Um, is actually next season, yeah? Because because Daniel Fark has waved the white flag today. The players are now are now are now. It's that I mean that's going to go through the players straight away. They'll all know that we've given up. So I'm really worried about the damage that's going to happen. So damage limitation and what we do this season is something that we need to discuss in this. And let us know in the comments what you would do. But Jack, how are you feeling about next season? Like how how are you honestly feeling about next season? Because I know that you've said to me before, Chris. I don't think we're going to bounce back up straight away. I think it's going to be as easy as that. Do you still believe that? Yeah, I do. Just to go back slightly to the question um, where somebody asked, you know, what players do you fear most leaving? I think to put my optimistic hat on for 30 seconds and I'll go back to being pessimistic, Jack, again. It's not always necessarily a bad thing to lose your best players. You you generate cash. Well, be say it. Sorry, Matt, go on. For example. Yeah, yeah. So you'll... You'll generate cash, which is always good. Generating cash is always a good thing. It keeps a self-funding club afloat. It also, players sometimes outgrow a club. But Stuart Webber um, said that multiple times. You know, we were all fuming when we let go of James Madison. Um, but he, you know, needed, um, needed to move on. I was speaking to um, someone last week at the club and they put it in a really good way. We are a club that relies on youth and developing youth and bringing youth in. Sam McCallum's the latest of the signings. If you keep a player like Max or like Jamal that want to leave, how does that look to future youth players? They'll be going, I don't want to sign for Norwich because when I get to a potential that's better than them, they're not going to let me leave. So 
it's not always, what I'm saying is it's not always a bad thing to let go of some players. You don't want a complete turnover because everything's happening too quickly then. But it's important when the time comes and you know when it's the right time to sell, to make sure that you sell and at the right price. In terms of next season, I wouldn't say I'm worried, but I am getting slightly frustrated at the complacency of some people who are just saying it's fine. We haven't spent much. We'll have money in the bank. We've got some good players. We've got good players coming through. Fark is a good manager, et cetera, et cetera. We'll yeah. bounce right back up. That's yeah. that's a nonsense. And you can't get caught up in that. One, it's complacent. One, two, it's utterly deluded. Like it just is. It, it, it is deluded because players move on. The championship sides who were there when we got promoted and they're still there will know how to play us if we don't adapt. The energy is whole, is completely different. Going through one promotion is draining enough. To then have to go back and do it again is really difficult. So for the people saying, don't worry, we'll go down, we'll be fine. I just I cannot get on board with that. I just can't. Yeah, I think I think structurally going down it's okay. Like structurally, we are set up to yeah. set up to be resolute in the championship. We're set up to be safe in the championship. We're set up to to, in my opinion, challenge to to go up to the Premier League again. We have got a good base of players, but don't forget that base of players, that that core group of players, the likes of Marco Steedman, Mario Vrancic, you know, they've they have they they have been nowhere near the team this season. So I think there's gonna be some some cultural challenges around those players about you know bedding them in again and, and who knows, maybe they'll maybe they'll leave. Maybe they're fed up, maybe they've maybe they will be frustrated by the lack of game time they've had this season. Um, you know, and, and maybe that will affect our championship campaign as well, because say you do bring those players back in, they're gonna have in the backs of their heads, ah. I know what you're doing again. You're using me to get to the Premier League. You're using me because I'm a nice guy and I don't cost much money to get your club to the Premier League. And then you're going to try and sign someone and mug us off again. I, I honestly think that that could be a challenge that we face. I really do. And for me, I just really fear going down to the Championship when we've not produced a single good performance off the back of the restart and you know I'm, I'm positive I try to be optimistic and that scares me to death Jack it really does like it really worries me that we continue to just serve up the same shit week on week on week on like over and over again like the same mistakes happening individual errors tactical naivety lack of fight now I don't know how as supporters I almost feel like that. Uh, this is why I've always said I think the club should should say something and and almost a, not maybe apologise to the fans and say, look, we've let you down this season, guys. We we thought we'd give it a good go. We know that we set your expectations at the fact that it was going to be really tough, but we're actually really sorry because we actually really believed that we could have done better than we did. Um, and I think that a message like that would just get the fans back on board. But what I'm so worried about, Jack, is us not putting in a single good performance, going down to the championship with our fight, and then the Fark Out Brigade is on, like it's on. Um, and, and it becomes, it goes from a small pocket of supporters. It's it's growing momentum now. The snowball's growing, and the snowball's not going to stop until we see, first of all, a good performance. Um, but second of all, we see a goal, a win. And like these are like, ugh, we have to see that. And I don't blame people for jumping on board with that. I really don't. Jack, yeah. Um, we've got Mr. Hux in, and I really want, and I really need to actually say something, right? Because although I will address Darren Huckabee's uh, comment on Facebook, I actually disagreed with his tweet today. I actually didn't disagree with it. I was quite disappointed with it because because Hux, like great friend of the channel, top man, absolutely top man. So thanks for commenting, Hux. But he tweeted about an L today, very entitled to his opinion. And by the way, a winger talking about the winger, I respect that. But God, I feel a bit out of my depth here. But here we go. <laughs> I don't know why I did this. Why did I do this to myself? I'm a bit scared. Hux is a bit scary. Here we go. I think Anel is the least of our worries, Hux. I really do. I thought that that tweet was just like, I, it, it was in the same category for me as people are slagging off Timmy Pukki at the moment. And I don't get it because like Anel, if he had a good team around him, would would be producing. He would have that final product. I believe that. If people were actually moving for him and actually creating some options for him, I think he'd be doing a lot better than he is. So I was a bit frustrated with that, but it was really interesting to get Hux's takes 
on Anel for sure. Um, but for me, Anel and Puki are the least of our worries at the moment. They really are. Anyway, let's address Hux's um, message, Jack. Yeah, so we'll let Darren, um, you're more than welcome to reply. We'll, we'll, we'll allow a right of reply here. So, yeah, tell us why you were frustrated with Onel's performance today. I, I kind of get it. I think he was wasteful in front of goal. Um, the only reason we're getting, you know, dead excited about, well, not dead excited, he, he looked the most impressive of the performers today is because he gets in dangerous positions, but nothing often comes of it at this level. Anyway, Darren said, thought this was um, the, thought this was the best team everybody's ever seen. Some of the best players in the club's history, question mark. We've all had a massive reality check. Players that have been brought in haven't pushed the squad on at all. Next season is a quick turnaround. Need a few performances to give us confidence at the start of next season, which you said, Chris. Big decisions and characters needed. And look, that's a really good point, actually, because I forgot about that. We don't, I don't know if the date's been released for the start of next season yet, but it's going to be a really quick turnaround. Often you'll get six weeks off, players will go on summer holidays. You've got a bit of downtime and it's almost like as a fan, when you get to the start of ne the next season, you you've kind of forgotten about what happened last season because you've had a bit of time off, you've brought new signings and this, this time it's going to be completely different. We still won't be allowed back in the in the stadium, so we'll be watching on TV. It's going to be fresh in our mind and it's going to be fresh in the players' minds. So... One, we do need to put some performances in. We need to score a goal first. Like, let's have baby steps here. We oh, need God. <laughs> and you know what? At this moment, I take a VAR goal. Like, I take anything. We just need to score. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Not that far. Not that far. Um, that's, that's fraudulent. Jack, Hux has said something really important right at the end of that message. Big decisions and characters needed. Yeah? Really important. And I tweeted it today. You know, I actually coined it as critical conversations. And I actually, I kind, I'm kind of with Hux, you know, decisions, critical conversations. I mean, we're at the point now where we need to be actually having a very honest conversation. And you know that your culture is a successful one when you can be open and honest and transparent with each other and have an open conversation and say, you've not been good enough. Why is that? And if they say, oh, you know what, Stuart, you're right. I've not been good enough. I've let you down. You know, I, th I think that's important. I think we need to be having those conversations. And hey, look, maybe, and I hope, I hope they will have those critical conversations now. But what Hux has said, Hux hasn't said conversations. Hux has said decisions. And when Darren Huckabee, someone of his pedigree and his experience and, and you know, being playing at the top level in this Norwich City team, when he's saying decisions, that worries me because decisions means players moving on people coming in i mean that i don't think that that's that that's more than conversations so it worries me a little bit that we've got the likes of darren huckabee saying something like that well darren's had his reply it's on screen now everyone he said we haven't scored in nine games of course excluding um the cup game so premier league games we haven't scored in nine games on l has been our most dangerous player on restart but we haven't scored or look like scoring in most games. I guess that's what I'm saying. We've got in dangerous positions through on L, but actual final product, and we said it at the top of the show, Timu Puki scored 11 Premier League goals. Pretty decent return. Been off the ball slightly, but I think he still had a fairly admirable season. Todd Cantwell scored seven. Very decent return for him. The yeah. next goal scorer, Chris, is on one. One goal. Jack, I need, I, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have a pop of you here. Saying that Timu Puki has had an admirable season is so wrong. And people that slag off Pookie, I'm sorry, but I will stand with him until the day I die. Because oh, we like signed it. that man for free. No, 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 no. We signed that man for free. Yeah. He is the reason that we got that we won the league last season. So I don't think it's admirable. We signed him for nothing with no pedigree and he is produced. And without Team Pookie, by the way, we wouldn't have won any games this season. So I think we need to be really sensitive around the conversation around Team Mupuki. I really do. But I, I do understand where you're coming from. I do. No, I, I think I was being sensitive. I said it was a good return. I think, admir I think admirable is a bit... I think admirable is a bit patronising. I think he deserves more respect than that, Jack. Well, he hasn't scored for a, a few months. Yeah, but no one's been helping him, Jack. Where have, the, where have the through balls been? Where have the crosses been? Where's the team's confidence? It's on the deck. We've, the Timmy Pookie thing is not even an argument. It's not a debate. And by the way, the first name on, on my team sheet in the championship is Timu Pookie. Oh, yeah, no, I agree. I mean, to, to be honest, it's not, you know, Adam Ida is is, is challenging someone. I don't think he's at Pookie's level, but 
you, what's the alternative? Josip Dermic. I, no, I saw Nick Masheter, who's, you know, we all love Nick and he's a good friend of the channel. But he said, oh, um, Dermic looks like a championship signing. He's not a championship signing. He's not He's not going to score goals in the championship. He, you know, you need to be more rough and tumble in the championship than you do in the Premier League. He doesn't move. The bloke just stands there. Yeah, no, I really do. I think, but it is, and I think everyone's dancing around it at the moment. I think we all know who the passengers are in this Premier League journey. I think we all know deep down who the passengers are, um, both on and off the pitch. Um, but I think Darren's right. I think that Anel, you know, I, I, I think right, Anel, Puki, forget it. Yeah, they've they've been great. They've been good for us. Yeah, they really have. Anel hasn't been in the team a lot this season, so for him to show the heart, the desire, the fight that he's doing now unlike everyone else on the pitch is exactly what I want to see. Jack, question for you. And I, and I promise you, I've only had two Australians tonight. Promise. Darren Huckabee, would you have him back in this side right now? <laughs> what? I get current, current Darren Huckabee or 2005 Darren Huckabee? No, no, no. Current. I mean, <laughs> 2005 is of course, but I mean, I'm, Last season after in the, in that legends, the Russ and where was it? Right. Yeah. Russ and where's last season. Yeah. He was phenomenal. <laughs> he's still running, and he's run. I've, we, you know, his posts on Twitter is is ten k times. They're, they're ridiculous. They're like so quick. So he's still got it. Um, right. that, that's right. what we're talking about is is Huck still good enough? Probably <laughs> is. Um, this is an interesting one. Jamie Everson. He says not enough of our players are physical enough for the Premier League. Look at Sheffield United, big strong team. Now I think you can maybe get bogged down in whether your team's physical enough. But I heard a lot of people saying on the radio and on the television today that we lack pace. And I kind of agree, especially going forwards. I looked at Duda, D Dermot. I mean, Hernandez is obviously quick, but even Toddy's not the quickest. Um, Kenny, you know, Tete, it, it does lack pace, doesn't it? See, but yeah, but but and again, I, I'm going to address something else that's really annoying me at the moment. Chris, you keep talking, mate. I just really quickly need to go to the toilet. <laughs> yeah, keep going. I'm wow. Going. At its best. Okay, here's something that's annoying me at the moment, folks. And apologies for my co-host just leaving to go to the toilet. There you go, Kenny McLean. There's a real interesting debate around Kenny at the moment, and I think he's been getting a lot of stick. But we've got to remember, we signed him from Aberdeen in the championship to get us close to, to, to pro being promoted. I really do believe that. So I think people are snagging off Kenny, but we've got to remember that, you know, Kenny is again in a team void of confidence. The, the, the passage of football isn't working and Kenny is just absolutely, I, I just don't, I don't see why people are slagging off Kenny McLean at the moment. I think he's playing in the Premier League. He's playing against the best players in the world. And I think for me, that's really harsh. Jack, sit yourself down. You're an absolute... You, I mean, what's this? This is the sort of performance that Norwich put in. You turn up for the first few minutes and then you bugger off. Sorry, um, mate. Uh, <laughs> someone just put Jack hasn't uh, got a mic. I'll tell you a really embarrassing story, actually. When I was um, when I was doing a shoot with Ball Street like a few years ago, it was a live a transfer deadline day live stream and it's like five hours long. So in a five hour stream, you can, you know, you can you can be excused to go to the toilet a few times. And we were all mic'd up on radio mics. And I did go to the toilet with my mic switched on and you could hear for like 30 seconds just my stream of piss on the stream. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a professional. Um, Jack, uh, I was just talking about Kenny. Sorry? I was just talking about Kenny McLean, mate. Okay, I, I'm i undecided on Kenny. I think I quite like him. Um, I know a lot of people are slightly frustrated with Kenny McLean, but I think he is what we need. And I think he's very well suited to the championships. And in terms of going forwards, next season we're in the championship. I think it's I think it's actually really crucial that we keep Kenny McLean. He's got that grit. He's got that determination. There's a bit of pace about him. He's got a good set piece delivery, although sadly we're not seeing it because we've got Duda on corners failing to beat the first man. Um, but I, 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 I'm with you in, in terms of, like, let's not moan about Hernandez because we've got bigger problems sort of thing. I, yeah. I think that I think that's the same with Kenny. I think the midfield has been a big issue this season. I don't think Farker knows his preferred two. And it doesn't help when you've got Tete having to drop into centre-back. And, like, we have had a bit of unlu unlucky kind of traits this season with injuries. But I don't think, um, I don't think Kenny's necessarily our problem here. I tell you a problem ahead of a problem. 
what? And people have been commenting it for 53 minutes now since the moment we started the stream, Jack. What the hell has happened with Mario Vrancic? I mean, I just don't get it. I mean, I know he came on today and didn't look the didn't look fantastic, but I feel for the guy because you know when he's when he's played for us, he's been he's been excellent. He really has. I mean, he scored some fantastic goals, free kicks. You know, he was the reason why we didn't actually fuck up our title winning campaign at the back end of last season. By the way, yeah. Um, and I just think I just think Vrancic deserves more of a chance this season. I know that people will be watching this saying, well, yeah, Chris, it's easy to say, just put him in and just and this is the thing, like people are saying with Adam Ida, oh yeah, well, you know, it's easy to just say, oh yeah, put Adam Ida in and blah, 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 blah. But for me, it's like it's obvious, it's obvious that Mario Vrancic deserves a chance. It's obvious that he would perform better than Duda. It, it, it's obvious that he would be able to collect the ball and distribute it in a more effective manner than Duda. I just don't get it. I really don't. Yeah, a big thanks to Michael Hoffer for commenting. You can see his um, Hoffer and Webb trial attorneys. A, a big thank you to all of our sponsors, actually. And Michael Hoffer has supported the uh, supported the channel. So thank you. Michael says, I'll say it again, free Mario. Now, this is a stat that really worries me. It's me, Jamesy, great username, by the way, says, Vrancic has not started a game since January. He's played, I think he started four games the entire season. And considering he was one of our finest players last season, and like you say, the, yeah. the final quarter of the season, he was our best player. You know, the free kicks, the goals at Leeds, um, the goals at Aston Villa. He was monumental in, in, in that. And I know his first, you know, six months at the club weren't that striking, um, but he's very eloquent. Like, he's he's very good. And, and, and I agree. It's not that he's being kept out of the squad by brilliant players. He's, I don't know why he's being mm. kept out of the squad. See, I, I don't. And what worries me, Jack, and for anyone that follows me on Twitter, I, I, you would have seen this this week. I actually tweeted a clip on the, uh, on the Lockdown Tactics podcast. Robert Snoddy, former Norwich player with uh, Boydie, Rangers legend. and Great podcast, by the way. Yes, yeah, class podcast. And Stephen Naismith came on the podcast and he spoke about his time at Norwich. And he left the club at the end. Of, and by the way, I'm so sorry to bring Stephen Naismith on because I know that that would have opened up a wound for many Norwich fans right now. But again, Jack, we've heard this a couple of times. We've spoken about players, potentially more experienced, but also other players that have spoken up. But I, I get this hint that if players, more experienced players or, or players that want to speak up, they almost, like Daniel Farker doesn't like that. Now, that's a rumour. That's, um, that's... I don't know if it is a rumour, is it? It's speculative, but we've had hints of that from Russ. We've had hints of that from Wes on our live podcast at Erpingham House with those two guys. We've heard it from Stephen Naismith now. We've heard it when Cam Jam went abroad as well. And and, na and, and now Stephen Naismith. And, and, I, and I almost think that are these... There's some obvious ones here, like Mario Vancic, what the hell's going on there? Um, Mo Leitner, what the hell's going on there? Like, have those two guys... Marcus Sheepman. You know, have they said something to Daniel Farker? Like, have they? I don't know. And I hate to speculate, and it hurts me that I'm doing this. It really does. I hate it because it's just, it's just nasty negative bollocks. But it's got that point where you're thinking... How? Like, how are these players not featuring for the side? I just don't get it. And and, it, and maybe it's money. Maybe money's talking, Jack. As I say, maybe Duda is, is signed on to some sort of contract that demands that, that he has to play. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't think it's necessarily speculating that Daniel Farker doesn't like players that have control over the dressing room. Although you could say, you know, Tim Krul is probably of that, uh, you know, of that kind of... Um, mold but I think Stephen Naismith said and let's not you know let's not beat around the bush Stephen Naismith wasn't good enough for us so it's not like he was kept out of the side and yeah. he, have been. he wasn't good enough but yeah. I think he said and, and Russ has said it and Wes has said it he didn't Farker doesn't necessarily like players and it's not a wrong thing I mean it's worked for, for the majority he doesn't like players that form opinions um, which I found really mm -hmm. interesting Emily Hayes says on YouTube where's our last minute winners gone doesn't even feel like we're playing to the to the last minute. That's a really good point. It's you know where are goals. Where are our goals gone, Emily? That's what I want to know. Never mind last minute winners. I would I would take a just a goal in a defeat at the moment. 
Yeah, I mean, but it's true. You know, we we built our our season last year. We built the momentum that took us up on last minute goals, on injury time goals, and they've gone. It like even at one nil today against Brighton, at one nil against Brighton, you're still in the game. You're still in the game at two nil. Um, it, it didn't work that today, but we'd never even look close to equalising. See, and this is the thing, Jack. This is the thing. This is what's frustrating me, yeah? We've always been in games, and that's what I would give credit for. Like, there's been a few games, like, maybe, I think we plucked up five, four or five, or maybe six before, where it's been a whitewash, like the four nils, the, the five one to Villa. We've said that over and over again this season. But it feels to me that we've always been just, just one goal away from doing something. And I kind of just wish that we would totally shit, because then I'd be like, we're just shit. But we're not, and that's what's hurting me. And what's and what's frustrating me, Jack, is we've got a good team of players there. I, I'm not buying anyone in the comments saying that that we've not got the the talent. I I actually disagree with that. I think that the talent, of course, needed support. We we needed to invest some money and and of course bring some players into the mix to help support those young players. But I don't buy that we've not got the talent, and that's what's worrying me, Jack. When you've got some top pedigree footballers in that team, but they're just not doing it, questions, critical conversations, as Hux has said, decisions need to be made. Yeah, uh, let's um, let's get the, you know, we're all about yin and yang on this channel. Let's get Roger Mallet's opinion on that. He says last minute goals have gone because Premier League teams are all in top physical shape. And last year we had a little bit extra in the championship. I'd, I'd take that on board, Roger. I do. I'd say... I agree with it to a certain extent, but you still don't have to be physically as good and, and mentally as good to still look in the game in kind of the 90th minute. We, we just don't even look like cut, cut, cutting chances at power at the moment. Um, Jack, you've said something there really important, mentality. We've not spoken about this. We've spoken about talent, poor recruitment, um, Daniel Farker. We've spoken about Delia. But what about mentality? Because for me... I think the I think the boys need some support there, you know. I, th I think we need some serious psychological support because I just don't understand how you know. You know what we were laughing at the other week, Jack? Is even if we were being really out of order and ridiculous, and we said, "Well, you know what? Even if you're playing for a move now, play for the move." Play for the move, yeah? Give it, you know, give it all you've got and prove that you're good enough. And I had this conversation with someone this week and, and they said to me, Chris, you know what we need, actually? We just need Daniel Farker to actually react like that and be like, Emmy, you think you're good enough to get a move from this club? You show me that you're good enough to get this move, yeah? Even if you play it like that. And I know this sounds a bit, you know, hot-headed and a bit, maybe a bit mad, but even if you take that angle, the players aren't even performing like, they want a move. They're just so void of confidence. They just, they just look shot. And 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 there's there's a lack of ideas. There's a lack of creativity. Um, and you know what as well? I look at the body language. Now, I don't know. Maybe I, I'm just too interested in self-psychology and stuff like that. But I'm massively interested by body language, Jack. Really interested in it. And the great thing about these drinks breaks is... And I and I'll, I'll honestly, I want everyone that's watching this now to to to, to, no, to notice this for the next time. Look at the players' body language when they go in for a drinks break. Do they look like they're listening? Do they look like they're they're respecting, or have they got their heads down and are they just nodding their heads? And and are they and have they got their arms folded? And do you think? And and I know this sounds a bit mad. I'm not disrespecting the players, but what I'm saying there is. Surely you should just be all ears to what was the manager going to say to improve my game and to improve the, the, the team's game. But for me, it just seems like there's not that injection of need, of desire and, and bite. And we've got Darren Huckabee sitting here in, in, in the comments now, Jack, and we should probably respond to his comment again because it's only fair because we've got a club legend and we may as well. But you know what Huck's had? Bite. I don't see bite in that team. I don't see bite. And do you know what I mean by that, Jack? I mean nastiness. I mean gamesmanship. Yeah. You look at all of these top teams and they they know and 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 they know when to roll around, they know when to dive. And I know people will be like, hang on, Chris, what? You're telling us to dive? You're telling us to cheat? No, I'm not. I'm just telling us to play the game like others play it. 
Yeah. Holtie, 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 brought that up on, Holtie brought that up on the podcast we did with him when we were comparing his Premier League side and this Premier League side. We were like, we think this Premier League side at the moment is better. Well, we were talking out of our asses there because it's clearly not. But he was like, the reason I did, I excelled in the Premier League and we excelled in the Premier League was because yeah. when we were under pressure and Zach Whitbread hoofed it long, I'd, I'd buy a foul, you know, I'd buy a foul. And I'd, and I'd relieve the pressure. I don't see Josip Dermich doing that. Robin Frost raises a... a oh, I've lost the comment now. There's so many coming in. Um, first of all, Nelson Oliveira is in the comments and he says, Chris Reeve for manager 2020. I don't think that's the real Nelson Oliveira, but there we go. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm sorry. I've lost the comment. Oh, no, here it is. Robin Frost says, it's not only Norwich who are suffering... Bournemouth, Villa and Watford all struggling with this lack of atmosphere. There's no home advantage for Norwich in these crucial games without fans. And Robin, we have addressed this on previous um, live streams. And I do agree to a certain extent, but this isn't an anomaly. We we haven't been able to come from behind all season. We haven't picked up a single point from losing positions this season. So this isn't just a post-COVID effect. This has been a season long thing. So I could take that comment more on board if it's only just happened and we've looked, you know, devoid of quality and confidence and creativity. But I don't, I don't buy it because it hasn't been there all season. And and I'm sure it does play into, into a you know certain extent. But like if you were Brighton today, they they were kind of in a relegation battle, but they were probably safe because the three, you know, there's teams blowing that aren't good enough. Are you telling me they're meant to be able to get up for a game? more than us because it's it's a nonsense like we should be able to get up for games like this without fans these players are fighting for premier league survival for norwich right for norwich you're telling me they can't get up for games because there's no fans i'm not buying it it's nonsense see jack I, i'm gonna have to disagree with you I, I you know what i'm with robin wholeheartedly when i found it's out excuses chris it's excuses but hear me out jack when the restart was announced I looked at the fixtures we had. I look at I looked at the running we had. I looked at the running of other clubs and what they had. And actually, I have no doubt that the top brass at Norwich would have tr obviously, of course, tried to vote in favour of getting the season voided. Right? Obviously, those I genuinely believe, Jack, the running that we had, and I said it before the season started. We've 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 got a good running. We've got a good running, Jack. We're playing some very some teams at home that we should be you know, uh, opposing ourselves on. We should be, you know, creating chances and and scoring goals. And and actually, I'm with Robin. I, I look at that and I go, fuck, that's desperately unlucky. And, and yes... I'm not buying that unlucky thing, man. I'm just not buying it. No, yes, it's an excuse. No, no, I'm admitting that it's an excuse. And now I'll jump on your side of the fence and I'll say, and I've said this before, I hope to God that no one ever, ever, ever disrespects the Norwich fans again. Because even if we're there and being negative, we're there. And you know what? We'll be there, not just next season, not just the season after, because Norwich fans aren't a club full of glory hunting, Premier League, just wannabes. We, we will be season ticket holders for life, no matter what. We will follow the club across the country. Our, our statistics of atmosphere and the way that we we follow the club, we've got the best away stats. You know, the, the home capacity is always through the roof. The season ticket numbers are, are, are always there. So we're always there. So actually, now we're not there. I think, Jack, we're seeing the stark reality of the importance of the Norwich fans. And actually, Jack, you know what I see? I see now what has been said as an excuse oh the fans haven't been good enough oh the fans haven't backed the boys oh the fans are moaning no 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 the fans have been there the fans are there in the stadium and they will have your back yeah we might moan we might groan but we will have your back so actually jack i'm with robin on this it's a, it's making a massive difference because if the norwich fans were there today yeah even if daniel farker didn't give them a bollocking after at half time or at the final whistle, you'd sure as hell hear it from the Norwich fans. And I think that's an important element of the game that we're lacking. Yeah, no, I, it was convincing, Chris. I'll give you that. And, and Robin did raise a good point. Uh, look, I, 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 Matthew Johnson, are you, where, where are you going now? Are you staying? My, uh, my laptop's running out of charge. Hang on, hang on, old boy. I'm getting there. Okay, well, you carry on. You, you crack on with that. Matthew Johnson, good friend of the channel, and thanks for your continued support. Also, I'm just going to quickly say, 
we're 10 subscribers from 18,300 on the channel and there's Ooh. nearly 500 of you watching. So even if 1%, no, that won't do it. Let's say 2% of you um, subscribe. If you haven't already, that will take us above that. So please, 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 if you haven't already subscribed, hit subscribe and the bell. And it means that when we go live, you'll get notifications on your phone or your iPad, whatever you're watching on. So, you know, we'll keep doing these if you keep subscribing. That's the deal. Matthew, Jack, go on. I've just got to in interject here on that note. Little exclusive, which is a bit brave me saying it because it might not happen, but it, I think it will. So I'm going to say it. Do I know about this? Yeah, you know about this. But okay. I exact details it's likely that if you subscribe to our youtube channel channel you will be in with a huge huge reward for doing that in the next few games right we're not see at talk norris city we're not just going down without a fight we are putting in the effort we will produce the content and my god we have got the most cool thing that's going to happen before the end of the season for one of our watch alongs okay so make sure you're subscribed to talk norris city Definitely. And if you're listening back to this on Spotify or iTunes or whatever, come over to YouTube and you can see our ugly mugs as well as our voices. So there you go. Anyway, Matthew Johnson says all season we've dropped points to our rivals. Um, we had the run in to save ourselves that the damage was already done. I completely agree, Matthew. And that's the reason I'm not buying these comments about the lack of fans, because I agree it, it does play a part. But just get your business done early doors and then we won't have to be worrying about this. Beat Crystal Palace at home instead of conceding late on to Connor Wick and beat Southampton away when they're, you know, they're str struck with injuries. Beat Burnley away. You know, go to these teams with the fire in your belly, with the passion in your heart, fighting for the badge rather than the name on the back. And let's start to pull these performances out early doors rather than leaving it late when we have got injuries, et cetera, et cetera. It, I, I just keep seeing these as excuses and I hate excuses. When you're not good enough, people find excuses. And that's what I'm seeing from, from certain people. So let's take responsibility. Let's all get on board and, and understand we're coming from a good place here. One of love. If I didn't care about Norwich, I wouldn't be fussed that we're losing. But I do. So there you go. Um, anyway, I keep seeing actually, I keep seeing this name pop up. Jordan Rhodes. Um, yeah. This season, we have less firepower up front through the lack of roads. We have had a weaker defence through injury. We've had a weaker midfield through poor selection and bad signings. This is a good point. We've probably had a worse team this season than we did in the Championship. And that's a worry. Yeah, God, that, and by the way, what comment from you there, Jack? I mean, great point raised, of course, but great point. Have we got a worse team in the Premier League than we had in the Championship? I think, you know, you know let us know in the comments. I, I actually... I, I can actually kind of half believe that, which is really scary, Jack. Really scary as hell. How can we go from having a league winning team to actually somehow getting worse? I, I, I absolutely just, I, I don't get that at all. It's a really good point. And, and Jack, by the way, people have given us a lot of stick, and I'm going to put us under fire here, but sod it. Oh, no. No, 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 no. I'm going for it. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm not afraid to have critical conversations. Okay. Everyone slagged us off for our love for Dennis Rabeni. Okay. Now, for me, no, 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 no. Hear me out. And I bet you people in the comments will eat their humble pie and will say that I'm right here. I bet you. Why did we get rid of Dennis Rabeni, who, by the way, delivered for Paderborn in their relegation campaign? He actually scored goals. Yeah. Because he wants it. He loved our football club. He really wanted to play for our football club. And I would much rather have him up front than Josip Dermic all day long, all day long. And there's this great thing about strikers in hindsight. And I know hindsight's a wonderful thing, but we bring up Jordan Rose. And isn't it funny how we, when we went to the Premier League, everyone went, no, 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 no. We don't need Jordan Rose. You know, oh, no, 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 no. This is overrated. This isn't an agenda. This isn't a, an item we should worry about. We're better than Jordan. Yeah, he's good enough for the championship. Can't do it in the Premier League. Bloody hell. How wrong was that? Yeah. No, I agree, mate. Um, Peaky's in the comments. He says, hello, guys. How are you? Uh, another disappointing result today. If you don't take your chances, you won't win. Sadly, we've only turned up this year for the big teams. I'd say to that, Peaky, and, and, and good to see you in the comments, we didn't create chances. We had none to take. <laughs> like, um, I, I, I love uh, I love seeing Peaky's name pop up. Right. I, I, saw him at, um, I saw him at a lot of away games last season. And I can remember specifically after we'd beaten Sheffield Wednesday, 4-0, I think, at 
Hillsborough. We all went to a went to a pub afterwards. We got some pints in, and we I can just remember us sitting around that table and going, "Oh, this is what a great time to be supporting Norwich." You know, we've got our two pound fifty pints. We've just watched our our team put in a great display up north. That was a really good time. So my I'm, I have got a point here, although I've gone around the you know gone around the roundabout a few times. Um, make the most of the good times. Yeah, like that. And embrace the bad times because when you embrace the bad times, w- which we're doing now, I felt bitterly disappointed after today's result. Then times when you are sat in, sat in them Sheffield pubs drinking your you know your carling or whatever, God, they feel good. Do you think, that, and Jack, on this note, and I'm going to go up to, there's been a really good comment, by the way, in the comment section about Dennis. But before we go on to that, do you think, that, this do you think that, yeah, it is, but hang on a minute, whole fire. Do you think that these players are feeling the pain enough, Jack? Because as fans, I think, yeah. that, I think that we feel the pain so much that we love the moments even more, you know, like the Manchester City win and, and you know, winning the league and all of that. Like, we love it so much more because we We've had, you know, and I had um, Dave Carolan, of course, used to be in the backroom team at, at Norwich when we were relegated in 05. We spoke about the Fulham match and I'm going to throw Dave under the bus a bit here. I'm sure he won't mind. He said, at least we at least we fought at Fulham. Yeah. How scary is that, by the way? Yeah. But anyway, my point is, I'm not sure that I think there's a few individuals in that team that aren't feeling the pain enough at the moment. And, and also Dave- going back to that Fulham game. We took it to the final game of the season, that campaign. And it felt it felt even worse because, you know, we had a chance on the final day. We were dead and buried in January this season. Well, you said it in, in to be fair to you, Jack, you got a lot of... of, of sl- I said in October. I said in October, people, we're going oh, yeah. down. And oh, I had so many people saying to me, oh, you're not a true fan, you're not supporting the boards. You could oh, see it a mile off. I was pissed off at you for that, though, because I think that was too early to say that. But... You were right in the end. And um, Dennis Rebeni, third top goal scorer for Norwich this season. Yeah, that's that's got to be the stat of the day. Dennis Rebeni is our third top goal scorer. And he hasn't been <laughs> for half a season. <laughs> Fucking hell. Jesus. That's, oh, uh... Anyway, we've been going for an hour and 15. And I'm, and I'm conscious that, um, you know, these people in the comment section, uh, I'm sure they, you know, they, they might have their dinner in the oven or something. You know, don't let your, don't let your, your dinner burn because of us. Um where do we go from it? I'm trying to wrap it up on a on a, on a easy to one. Yeah, that, and that's not easy. Is it? Let us know in the comment section where do we go from here. If you haven't already, subscribe. I'm not letting any of you any of you leave here today without subscribing to the YouTube channel because I know we've got so much good content to come, and I don't want any of you to miss it. And also, it's nice to have a, a debrief at the end of the day. It makes you feel a bit better. Chris, just wrap things up, will you, for for me? Okay. Um, first of all, wrapping things up for the fans because they're the most important thing of, the, of this football club. Oh, one Rep- quick thing. One quick thing. We've just hit eighteen thousand three hundred subscribers. So thank oh, you. Amazing. I like to get to round numbers. So keep, just keep piling on, and we'll try and get to eighteen point four. Anyway, Love, thank you for the support, guys. I really appreciate it. Really do. And, and we promise that we will sub- we will actually give you the best Norwich City content possible before the end of the season, even though. The team's playing crap. I promise you we've got a really good surprise for you. So do stick around on Talk North City. To wrap it up, Jack, as I said, fans are the most important thing. So let's 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 manage this issue here. What do we do as supporters from now to the end of the season? Well, first of all, don't be afraid to say what you think because that's quite important. Yeah, be honest. You know, you're allowed to be critical 100%. But at the same time, try and be fair and try to see the positives as well. I think a lot of people are like, bark out and sack the board and all this stuff. But you've got to think like, we need someone to buy the club if that's to happen. We need a manager that we want to attract. We need a manager that Stuart Weber wants to have. There's so many of these things. But anyway, as fans, I think it's important to have perspective. And I know that hurts right now, but there are loads of clubs in serious shit one of them in blue and white down the road, who, quite frankly, are going to rot in League One. I mean, feel free to clip this up, Ipswich fans, and hit this with me in a few years, but I honestly don't see how they're ever going to get out of that league. Now, Norwich fans need to remember, we are ahead of schedule, and I know that's annoying, and I know I bang that drum, but we need to remember, we've got our club. Yeah, we're still together. We've got a cracking fan base. And I've spoken to a lot of people in the football club this week and they are hurting and they want to make amends and they want to put this right. So we've not got a club full of crooks. 
In terms of on the pitch, Jack, to wrap it up, Daniel Farker must start Adam Eder in the next game. He must start Todd Cantwell in the next game over Duda. We cannot see Duda and Josip Dermich start up front again. I can't cope with it. I really genuinely can't cope with it. And I, and I think I just really hope that we go down fighting, yeah? Let, let's actually, let, let's get close to surviving at least. I just think it's embarrassing going down at the bottom of the league without even fighting. I really do. I really do. Because I look at that Bournemouth team, Jack, and I think, and we went to that away game, by the way, cracking day, um, despite the result. I think we're better than Bournemouth, but Bournemouth have accumulated enough points to be in the position where, where for them, it's not going to be embarrassing. And that's what I'm ashamed of at the moment. So, if anyone, if, if you're a player and you're watching or listening or if you're the management team listening, please just do everything you can to fight to the death. The fans need to see passion. The fans need to see fight. The fans need to see that you love this club. And I don't care if it's just, I don't, I don't care what you do to show that you love the club, but the fans need to see that more than ever because we're not seeing it at the moment. No, well said, Chris. Well said. I echo them thoughts. And I think this is the final comment we'll show of the day because I think it just sums everything up. John Sire on Facebook. Love this so much. God, this hurts. And I agree. Like we all care. We all really care. Um, and and that's why we're hurting. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, subscribe on YouTube. If you're listening to this, if if audio is your preferred platform, and it's also worth mentioning, actually, on our Spotify, on our Apple. Subscribe on there. There's a massive back catalogue of interviews that Chris has done with massive names, players from the past, ex-managers, Paul Warren. That's a cracking listen. He's just got Rotherham promoted. We'll be playing them next season. So, you know, get ahead and, and listen to some championship uh, manager interviews. Head over to there. They never went on YouTube. They're audio only. So head over there, Spotify, uh, iTunes, wherever you listen to your podcast, type in the TNC podcast. And you can listen to them because because they're really worth it, even though they were done a few months ago. Yeah, definitely, Jack, hundred percent. And and thanks for bringing that up. I actually completely forgot that, that we did those. And I think a lot of people don't realise that they exist. I mean, you know, Bradley Johnson. We had that months ago, and he really revealed, you know, exactly what happened in his time and his departure away from the club. You know, we got that first, and and I think that a lot of the YouTube viewers don't realise that. So please do head over to Spotify, SoundCloud or iTunes and, and enjoy those. Great insight with Gary O'Neill as well. Um, you know, so many fantastic ones on there. So do go and check it out. And I just want to say, Jack, again, thank you so much to everyone that's watching at the moment. I really appreciate it because it's really difficult as fans at the moment because we're not in the stadium. We're not with each other. We're not hugging each other. We're not buying each other beers, Mars bars, bets, losing, winning. At least we're together. And at the moment, we're not physically together. So I really, really am super, super grateful for everyone, everyone that's in here and has watched this. I really do appreciate it. No, massive. I'm just, I'm, I completely agree. I'm seeing loads of lo like lovely comments saying brilliant stream. Thanks again. Look, we're only doing this because we get to chat to you guys. Like, like I really do look forward to these, even after results. So, um, don't thank us. Thank to, thanks to you for sticking around. We're seeing the same names week in week out. If we don't read out your comments, we're seeing them, um, and we'll we'll get to you eventually. There's just a lot to get through. So, thank you so much. We'll see. You. What's our next game? Watford. Yeah, away. Okay, well, we'll see you after losing to Watford, everyone. Thanks very much for watching. And, uh, and we'll see you all again uh, very soon. Stay safe. Don't be silly. Um, yeah, we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. All the Bull City.